from verse 1 to 13 but permit me to read from verses or from verse 9 to 13 and I take the reading you must be on your guard you will be handed over to the local councils and flocked in the synagogues on account of me you will stand before governors and kings as witness to them. And the gospel must be first preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death. And a father is child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, left the center of the Jewish faith and life never to return. He did not come to uphold Jewish buildings and institutions. He came to create a new people from all the peoples of the world for the praise of his holy name. He left the temple with its corrupt practices and leadership. He rejected it because the continuation of its sacrificial system would undermine his sacrificial death on the cross. Jesus rejected the Jewish temple and leadership system because he knew that God was about to begin building something even better and more beautiful. There will be judgment on the temple. Jesus' disciples did not understand that. They were amazed by the beauty of the temple, its architecture. The temple complex was truly amazing. Herod the Great had been remodeling it for 50 years. Ancient historians say that from a distance, it looked like a mountain of marble decorated with gold. The temple was absolutely stunning. People thought that it would stand till the end of the world, but Jesus did not share the excitement and wonder of his disciples and others. When Jesus spoke about the destruction of the temple, the disciples asked to know when that will take place. The disciples were enamored with the outward appearance and beauty of the temple. But Jesus saw the temple full of beauty but empty of truth covered in gold, but concealing corruption, busy with activity, but idle in worship. What is your life like? Is your life like that temple? Are you looking great on the outside, but empty of love and worship for God in the inside? Do you 
have the appearance of godliness, but deny its power. Jesus wants our trust, our worship, and our obedience. He wants our hearts. Jesus is far more concerned with our faithfulness than with giving us timeline of the end. That is why he warns and encourages us to watch out, be on guard, and stay awake. He knows that, like his disciples, we are in danger of being deceived and led away from the truth. So, he tells us repeatedly to watch out. This means that we should focus on the present. Speculation about future is not as important as obedience in the presence. Jesus wants to protect us from fear. Lots of bad things will happen in our world. Bad things don't mean the end of the world is upon us. Therefore, we are to love with soberness and practice. Jesus is far more concerned with our faithfulness than with giving us timeline of the end. That is why he warns and encourages us to watch out, be on guard, and stay awake. He knows that like his disciples, we are in danger of being deceived and led away from the truth. So, he tells us repeatedly to watch out. This means that we should focus on the present. Speculation about future is not as important as obedience in the present. Jesus want, wants to protect us from fear. Lots of bad things will happen in our world. Bad things don't mean the end of the world is upon us. Therefore, we are to love with soberness and patience and not fear and speculation. Jesus mentioned four things that some people will claim to be signs of the end of the world to include false messiah, wars, natural disasters, and persecution. These things must take place, not as the end, but as the beginning of the birth pains. The end will come, but no one knows the time because Jesus will come back. God's timetable is unpredictable. He draws out events and sometimes accelerates them rapidly. His warning to us is that we must love in readiness and expectation. That we must not be led into panic over every contradiction of the universe. The end of the world will come when Jesus returns. We should not try to worry ourselves to figure out when that will be. We have seen many false messiahs from the first century in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 verse 36 and Acts of the Apostles chapter 21 verse 38. All the way to the present time we have experienced threats to the faith in Christ coming from the inside and outside. Yet, the Lord has been faithful to preserve us that we are not led astray. There are wars and rumors of wars. Jesus has not returned yet. Nations and kingdoms are continually rising against each other to Jesus. All these are part of life till he returns. Since wars are horrific, we should try to avoid them at all costs. But when they happen, do not be alarmed. Natural disasters will happen. And they're happening more often now. The process to the end of time has begun. What about the persecution of Christians? Is the world getting better? For the followers of Jesus Christ, persecution is a normal part of Christian life. Own family members betray Christians, but God will not abandon his people in their moment of need. He will help us to speak the truth and spread the gospel to all nations. 
Persecution helps in spreading the gospel of salvation in Christ Jesus among nations. Those who love the most may hate us and harm us for following Jesus. The Lord allows this because he wants to see our call legends to him. We are the most precious thing to Jesus. We are worthy to be his followers. Is Jesus most precious to you? People will hate us for following Jesus. But what we lose for following him is not worth comparing with what we gain at the end. We will be rewarded with eternal life. We cannot stop the end of the world from happening. Jesus will come back. We cannot stop the adversity and trials and sufferings and pain and persecutions that will fill our lives in this age. God only expects us to stay awake, be on our guard, persevere, be steadfast, and not move away from Jesus. Following Jesus will be hard, but considering the reward, those who follow him should keep following him to the end. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the end is coming. Grant us the grace not to quit on Jesus until he comes or calls us home. Because one day we will see that he was worth our following him. Amen.